on. Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Now we are back. Make sure that you join us every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Today, our guest is Dr. Faith. Dr. Faith, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Tony? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, it looks like you're in the office or in the hospital, the office. I'm in the office. I'm in the office. I just left um, operating, actually. But Wow. And now, what is it when you say left operating, what does that mean? You're a surgeon I'm, or? I'm an OB-GYN. Yep. I'm an OB-GYN. So I deliver babies and do hysterectomies and all of it, all that stuff. Wow. And so we literally are getting you on the job. Mm, well, I'm off now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> okay, great. Now, when was it that you bumped into me online? Um, honestly, it was you came recommended by a by a pastor. Mm. Yeah. So mm. I went through a divorce from a narcissist and I was seeking um, you know, recovery help. And that's when I stumbled into coaching. And so from that program and that particular person, um, I'll say his name if that's okay. Um, Bishop R.C. Blakes. Okay. Yeah. And so one of his platform items is talking about narcissistic abuse and recovery. And um, his coaching group coaching program was life-changing for me. And he mentioned some other people that were doing, you know, purpose and God's work and your name came out. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Tony, who's Tony Gaskins? Um, I, I'm not really on the internet and TV like that. So I, you know, looked you up and um, we had some coaching sessions together. And um, so that's how I found you. And I think the things that kind of stuck out to me are your, what, your three B's, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was working on that post-divorce recovery and um, you may, I don't know if you remember, but you did one thing that stood out to me. So it was about, it's been about a year, actually. Um, I told you when I was going through my divorce and you actually called me the day of my final trial. Mm -hmm. And you had told me you were on vacation and we connected then. So I really felt touched by that. Mm -hmm. So you were a man of your word and somebody that, you know, actually cares, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing. And it's just so interesting to see how the world is interwoven and like who you need, you cross paths at the right time. Now that has you, I mean, you're busy. So you're working, you went through a divorce, you've been investing in yourself, working on yourself. What purpose work has that led you to? Like what have you been outside yeah. of being you know, who you are, what have you been working on? So um, I really believe everybody, especially every woman, needs to have some type of entrepreneurial journey. I don't like to label it side hustle because that entrepreneurial journey should be actually be your purpose work. That's how I see it, right? Your nine to five is, you know, what you do, but that can fund your purpose work, which is what you were created for, right? That's your divine assignment. And that's how you can truly live a life of life by design and not by default, right? Because um, if you're in line with God's will and purpose, abundance will flow into it. He's going to want to bless you and connect you with the people to execute that. So I've really been delving, delving into the world of entrepreneurship. Um, and um, it's funny that you, I mean, it's, it's just, God is awesome. So today actually, um, a, a book that I've been working on is finally going to be available on Amazon for pre-order. And I have been working on a way to merge medicine and ministry, right? Because a lot of time church and state is separated, right? But we can't deny that mind, body, and soul and spirit are all connected to our health. So I've been working on a, um, a coaching program to help women um, find support when they're going through fibroids. Cause that is something that definitely affects a lot of women of color. Um, I feel like I do a lot of life coaching for free when I see patients in the office. Um, but I found like this was a need and a void in our community. Mm. Now for the men like me, what is fibroids? Mm. 
So a fibroid is like a, it's a, it's a tumor of the uterus. Um, July is fibroid awareness month, actually next month. And I feel like fibroids are not really talked about, but have very, very far reaching issues and problems. So you have like a normal uterus, but you'll have these extra tumors on the outside or on the inside of a woman's womb. And that can cause them to never get pregnant, have a miscarriage, have a lot of bleeding. And these tumors on their womb can be, can range in size of like one centimeter or like the size of a baby's head. Or sometimes you'll take out one tumor. Well, actually not really always one, but sometimes up to 30. So some of the, I have like a little post on Instagram, but I talked about never asking a woman if she's pregnant because she may actually be full of fibroids. And so when you talk to her and you see her belly looks big and bloated, oh, she's in her first or second trimester. Mm -mm. She may have a lot. She may be struggling with fibroids. Mm, I see. So it's, you say it's a tumor. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about it. And so now you do you do surgery on fibroids? All okay. day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. And so the merging of medicine and did you say ministry? Okay. And your book, uh, what's the title of it? Thank you for asking. So the name of my book is called Peace Rx, a simple holistic um, strategy for wellness. And um, is and we actually talked about this a while ago. I don't know if you remember, but it's a based on the biblical story about the woman with the issue of blood. And um, I kept, you know, trying to figure out the best way to articulate the importance of this story, because I feel like that story does merge medicine and ministry, right? So that story about the woman with the issue of blood is, I use that to talk to my patients from time to time to build up their faith. You know, they don't call me Dr. Faith for no reason, right? So I use that to build up their faith. And one of the things that that story talks about was the woman's intention for healing. She set an intention for healing through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, virtue has come out of me. That if we just stop and meditate on that, that Jesus said, who touched me? That was the power of her faith. That was the power of her faith. So at one of the verses, I think the story ends in one of the chapters and it talks about my daughter, your faith has healed you and made you well. Go in peace. Go in peace. And so a lot of women who are struggling with womb issues and fertility issues and fibroid issues, they're not at peace. They're not at peace. They're fearful about, am I going to have a baby? They're fearful about, should I do surgery? So like the research shows from the time a woman finds out that they have fibroids, it may take them three to four years before they act on doing something. And in that time, you're delaying, your destiny is being tampered with. So the, that's where that title comes from, Go in Peace. And I just feel like um, fibroids affect women of color um, more than other communities. And um, I feel as though women of color are also a very, a very, very stressed population. Very stressed population, right? From the workplace to home, to your health, everything. So I think peace, is important. Peace is something I believe in. Peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Peace is something that to me is a, is a weapon. You can stand in a position of peace and do a lot of damage to the enemy and also helps your body. So that's the kind of a whole thought process for peace. And it's actually a framework for my coaching. So I decided to, you know, link this book that merges medicine and ministry to a coaching program that I'll be launching next month, um, which is Fibroid Awareness Month. Mm. So now RX, does that stand for prescription? Mm -hmm. I'm just playing off the fact that I'm a physician. Peace, RX. <laughs> I, I like it. I like it, though, uh, because it's like a prescription for peace. That part. Which, yeah. we never, you know, we never get that prescription other than from Jesus. 
but we can't go through the drive through at Walgreens and get a prescription for peace. So I, I love that title. It's very creative. And in the book or on the back of the book, do you have it written of how you tied that in, like the Peace Rx, like where it comes from? Yeah. Or yeah, so the um in the back of the and it's an ebook, so it's a, it's a quick read. You can oh, you know, okay. take so, it with you. Yeah, so you, it's a quick read. Um, on the back of the book, um, describes the framework for peace, um, which includes you know obviously prioritizing your peace and being persistent, like the woman with the issue of blood was, because she had this issue for twelve years. That's a long time, right? And then E is for kind of envisioning, because she thought, said to herself, I can touch the hem of his garment. So just kind of envisioning um, what would you would like that to look like. And then A is kind of aligning yourself with the word of God, because that's where that power comes from. Alignment, right? And then C is um, confidence in what your faith breeds confidence, right? And courage. This woman had courage in a time and culture where things could have went left you know, because she was considered unclean, right? And then um, the last E is empowerment, because that's part of what I feel like I'm called to do is to heal women, empower women, and just really help women um, be free in any any areas of their lives. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. That is amazing. And now from that, from the book, will come a coaching program. Mm -hmm. Have you laid that out yet? Is it one-on-one -on -one coaching and you're taking them through a program or will it be group coaching or will you do both it's going to be group it's going to be group coaching and the goal is to have a, a community of um support because a lot of times people suffer in silence and i feel because of the nature of my job i i discuss a lot of um very private and vulnerable things so it's for me it's very easy to talk about these things but other people may not be able to so in that group setting, I'll be able to facilitate a culture of support, of peace, um, having people share their testimonies. Like, this is what I would love, Tony, is from the group coaching, people's faith gets built up that they're able to testify that, oh, I have the support, I'm pregnant. I've been trying for years, but you know, I, got, I built my faith up. I read the book, I was in the coaching, God moved. That would be great. That's that's what I would I would love. So um, it's going to be group coaching. And then after that, because everybody's fibroid journey is, is unique, right? It may, you may need the program because you're pregnant with fibroids, or you may need the program because you're thinking about having surgery, or maybe you've done surgery, or maybe you're considering getting pregnant. So everybody's on a different journey, right? This woman was on a 12-year journey dealing with the issue of blood, right? And so after the six months coaching, I'm hoping to offer some type of either membership for ongoing support as you need um, and possibly more individualized um, life coaching. And that would be something that you would have to apply for. Um, initially, you know, my journey to life coaching has been through the divorce with a narcissist. And I just feel like that particular experience was humbling but also necessary and eye-opening to recognizing your identity in Christ because I feel like the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? John 10, 10. And so if you are going through something like that, it is your right and your duty to recover and recover well and to thrive. So that's the back end offer. I would love to have help women, you know, if they need that type of assistance after the group coaching. Mm, I see. I love it. Now, that's a lot because you, you know, you didn't went to school for a long time. <laughs> now you're a doctor. So if if the Lord says, you know, transition from surgery and go full time in the ministry, coaching, speaking, is that a transition that you would do or would you do you think that? He will have you try to balance both and do like the coaching program on your off day and then keep your normal schedule. Oh, or I would definitely do you um, get an off day. Yeah, I get it. I get it. We, so I think because I am a practicing physician, my schedule can be, you know, demanding and up and down and stuff like that. But because I feel like this is part of my calling, I'm I'm definitely carving out time to do this and to support women. Um, on a consistent basis. 
But, you know, eventually, you know, a lot of physicians have entrepreneurial journeys. So this is one arm of it for sure. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, what about retreats? Have you thought about that yet? I've thought about it. Um, I don't know if I would want to host a retreat or necessarily collaborate with somebody else to curate an experience for the women. Um, but that is definitely something um, I have thought about as well. And actually, um, I thought a lot about a lot about different things. Um, sometimes women come out and ask for second opinions and physicians do telemedicine, right, for second opinions of what they've experienced. I feel like I have a very um, caring, I'm very empathetic, I'm very empathetic towards women. And I, and I listen. I think that's a piece that's missing in, in medicine and bedside is um do, do you hear me? Do you listen to the patient? <laughs> you know, so, um, but I don't want to, you know, necessarily pigeon myself, pigeonhole myself to just fibroids because I feel like God has created me and designed me to do so much more. But um, in this particular season, I'm, I'm grateful to at least launch this for women who may need it. Hmm. I see. That is amazing. Now, how, as far as like the work you do, how many days a week do you have to work and how many hours, like when you go to work, how many hours do you have to work like on average a week? Um, It's hard to quantify because it just, sometimes it depends on how long it takes to deliver a baby. So in a particular week, I may be in the office, maybe two days or two and a half days in a week. And then the other two days operating or taking call. And so some days at the hospital are busy and some days are not. So it kind of kind of balances out. Mm, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think we've had one other doctor so far. So it, it's kind of so interesting to see, you know, an individual like yourself who already has a lot of purpose, but yet still taking on another, you know, calling to, and they, they go together, but it's a lot. So when you think about you filling up and what are some of the things you like to do to kind of fill up and get what you need so that you can keep serving? Um, peace. <laughs> so I will unplug. Like, um, I, I think I find it to be incredibly important who you surround yourself with. There was, um, there was one a question I actually asked Bishop Blakes back in the day, uh, you know, because you know, single, wanted to date and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, how do you test the spirit? Like, how do you know? And so I have prioritized filling myself up by being around people who are also able to pour into me. So that's really important for me. I see. That's good. And that's one of the things that, that I really respect about what you're doing. And it also solidifies your calling because you went and worked with Bishop Blakes. Then you came and worked with me. So it's like a lot of times people go into the space so with so much arrogance that they feel like they know it all. They don't need anybody and they are afraid to be a student. And mm -hmm. But you are taking and you doing the work and you having people who God has called to pour into you and share things with you and kind of show you the ropes. And then you take what you learn and you apply it. And the thing is, is you had to apply a lot to become a doctor because that takes a lot of application. It takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline. And so I know I'm excited to see where you take this. When you think about your clients, Outside of, you know, the medical side of it, like let's say a woman doesn't have fibroids, mm -hmm. would your coaching help, you know, other women or what would be your ideal client that you would want to work with, you know, outside of the medical side? You know, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that. Um, initially, it was actually to help women recover from divorce and things like that. And I didn't quite feel like I, I, I fit the divorce coach label. Um, and I felt like I was more of a, a life situation. I feel like God has put me in so many different situations in life that I literally can probably relate to a lot of different women at very at various stages. 
I feel like I can relate to a woman that's older, a woman that's younger, you know, it's just like this generational appeal, a woman that's a mother, a woman that, you know, and so for me, I feel like I can help a woman who is looking, who has been through something, no matter what it is actually, but is looking to thrive. Um, it's actually funny. I did a speaking engagement um, last weekend and the people that came to me, you know, that were all sorts of women, women that asked medical questions, women who were in their 20s who wanted questions, who had questions, but women who wanted relationship advice. So I feel like I have that appeal to a, a broad spectrum of women, but ultimately I feel like I'm called to remind women their identity. What did Jesus say in that, um, that um, the woman of um, the issue of blood story called her daughter. I think that's what's missing a lot is women understanding that you are God's daughter. There's too much stress and unnecessary burdens that people are bearing as women, right? So think about this. If you truly did believe that you are, it's funny enough, look at look at look at my office. This is what I got right here. What does it say? It's a it's a woman that talks about God says you are precious, forgiven, all these things, right? So I really want to help women remind them who they are, whose they are. And um, part of my peace framework for actually life coaching individual women includes prioritizing peace, eliminating toxicity, right? Toxic mindset talk, toxic environments, toxic food and habits, right? A, adopting an abundance mindset. I think that is so critical. That is so critical um, because you have to know that that is God's design and will for you to be in abundance, right? And then P-E-A-C, communicate boundaries. I feel like a lot of times women are stressed and have a lot of stuff going on because they're not communicating. It doesn't matter if you have a boundary. Are you communicating that boundary, right? Even, um, I always joke and say toddlers have better boundaries than adults. They'll tell you no in a hot minute, Right? So communicating your boundaries. And then lastly, evolution. So not just knowing who you are, but also knowing that you're supposed to be constantly growing to a better and better. So yes, I'm a physician. Yes, I, you know, I'm very thankful to God for that. And yes, I still believe that there's more out there for me. And I feel I'm so excited to, you know, kind of delve into the world of entrepreneurship, authorship, coaching, and speaking. And I love it. And because you come in with a lot of credibility already and that, that's one thing that sometimes people separate and they say oh I am a academic you know I, I'm a doctor or I have whatever masters and so I don't want to be like a life coach because anybody could be a life coach but what you found is that you can do both and you still can have your respect and dignity being a doctor but you can be just as equally as great of a life coach and helping women. So to merge it, and I think you're going to come with a lot more women going to take you serious because of the work you've put in, you know, where it's not like you just jumped off the porch, like you've done the work, you went through the process and there's a lot to learn there. And I know it's way deeper than we can go here because it's a lot beneath the surface mm -hmm. and, you get into a story like yours, having to apply yourself the way you had to. So I am, um, when I think about like the group coaching and the books and things of that nature, I just, it's like, you can't see what God is going to do, but I feel it could be so big. And now what about the, the, for the ladies who don't want to do group coaching do you think you will be able to find any time for one-on-one -on -one coaching? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's going to be a situation where they just apply to work with me mm -hmm. just to make sure that I, I I hear your story, know where you're at and feel like it's a good fit to make sure that we can work together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything isn't just, um, it's funny you said that because um, it, it's definitely a process and um, I I, I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of traction with 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 you know positioning myself as a 
a narcissistic re recovery divorce coach and all this stuff. Like everybody would say, good job. But I, I just, it wasn't getting any traction. So I'm like, you know what? One of the, when, um, I heard the great advice from, one of the, uh, from a business coach and they're like, uh, you know, think about what people need. And this is a need that I'm providing. But from that, you're going to attract people that actually have a higher calling to work with you. So yes, um, you do not need to have five boys to work with me <laughs> at all, <laughs> at all. But definitely, I, I do think that the book, the Peace RX book, um, will help you with with any any situation really. Mm -hmm. And that's on Amazon for pre order. Yes, it came out today. Actually, I was when I saw that email, I was so excited, so excited. Awesome. So we'll everybody go to Amazon, type in Peace RX. And is it on the title? Is it Dr. Faith? Is that like um on the title? It's gonna have my first name Asohe, which means gift from God. Oh. But um Faith of Huba, um Asohe Faith of Huba is gonna is gonna be there. And um you'll know it's the book. It has a picture of a of a white rose on the front. Oh. Awesome. So make sure you check the description box so you can see the spelling of her name and the title of the book. Now, have you made a website? Yes. So my website is coming. However, I do have a, I'm, I'm building my Peace RX community. So you'll be able to stay up to date with all the different things that I'm doing. Um, and that is out. It is, I want to say go I am Dr. Faith MD backslash email i'll send you the correct link but you can also go to my instagram and the peace rx community link will be there awesome so we have everything in the description box that you need and i'm hoping that you can handle the flood of clients you know <laughs> and that it's uh it's manageable but you know let let folks know and this is the beauty of this because sometimes i know even with myself just having built a brand, I can be all over the place trying to serve people. And then I would assume yours is the same way because your job is demanding. And so it's good for people to see you and hear from you for this 30 minutes and, and realize, okay, when I book her, I also got to keep in mind, she is a doctor and stuff comes up. And so, yes, we may have to reschedule. Yes, she may be five minutes late. And I think sometimes I have, most people understand it, but every now and then you have that 10% that's just, they don't understand, you know, a busy coach's schedule. Mm -hmm. So I'm wishing you the best and Thank I'll you. be here for you. You definitely, you. it's going to be fun. It's going to be challenging, but I'm, I'm inspired that you're bold enough to be doing something so big already as a doctor and then get ready to do this too. Like I couldn't imagine being a life coach and then going and being a doctor. <laughs> and so you get ready to do both and that's amazing. So thank you so much. And everybody who has joined us, make sure you check the description box. Everything you need is there. And Dr. Faith, any last words? Um, just just on, honestly understand that your life is so much more than what it is currently and just really 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 don't underestimate the power of your peace prayer and your purpose mm, that's amazing thank you so much for joining us thank and you. we look forward to talking with you again and going a little deeper now, if you watch this, make sure you set your notification bell every Sunday, 9 p.m. If we're not on, that means I either made a mistake and forgot to schedule it or we're on a break until the next season. God bless you. We'll talk soon.